<laughs> so I'm going to introduce Jill. Angela's next. Angela, I'm going to introduce Angela, who is pretty awesome. And she has a sparkly shirt, and I think you should applaud her for that. Yay! <laughs> All right. I'm just, you know, if this reading thing doesn't work out, I can always try as a stripper. <laughs> uh, I'm going to do some poems, and I'm going to do some kind of science-y poems, because... When will I ever get a better audience for them? Um, <laughs> the first one is, well, it's kind of about mathematics, which I love, but um, I, well, you know, I love other subjects as well. Um, I guess I'm kind of a polymath, where I'm not monogamous with the mathematics. <laughs> and, um, but, um, but love itself is kind of complicated and it's much more difficult to understand than mathematics, so this is about love. It's called um, Greater Than or Equal to Three. <laughs> Love is not mathematics, and it's hardly ever less than three. It rarely stops at man and woman, straight and gay, or you and me, churning contradictions, clogging tubes in the definery that's turning quantum LGBT qubits into binary. Every single Boolean's in every state at once, and even when the Boolean's not single, it's still unsettlingly odd, and when it's not odd, then it is not even even. Oh my god, it's never simple, nothing ever seems to normalize. I miss the clever symbols in the system that I formalized, and this I do not understand. It's just too complicated. I'm very good at solving, so it must be who I dated. Yes, love is not mathematics, but forgive it all confusion. Don't avoid all that dramatics with the trivial solution. Its axioms are ill-defined, but may prove good or may prove well. If with your love you're thrilled to find, you never have to prove yourself. That's the end of it. <laughs> seen on Shadow TV, there's there's one of me wearing a mustache and stuff, and I'm talking about all the things I learned about love from New Scientist magazine, <laughs> but I'm not going to do that one, because you can see it on Shadow TV or on the YouTubes. Uh, I'm going to do one about uh, particle physics, because particle physics is cool. Um, I used to, well, is anyone familiar with the idea of grand unification? Yes. No. Okay, well, that's three people. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so that's like the idea that um, basically at really, really high energies, the four fundamental forces of nature um, basically combine into one, um, and, and they behave the same way. Uh, and I used to work at CERN, the big particle physics lab, that is smashing particles together at really, really high energies. Not high enough to combine all the forces, but high enough to combine some of them. Um, but uh, the cool thing about CERN is that, well, the reason that it was founded back in uh, 1954, I think, uh, was basically to get all of the countries of Europe all working together and um, doing science instead of blowing each other up. Uh, well, they still occasionally blow up things, but um, anyway, so this is called Grand Unification, and it's kind of about the physics thing, there's lots of puns and stuff, but it's also about CERN bringing countries together and things. <coughs> you might think that we're just doing science with our Hadron Collider so large, but we've built this electric alliance to give weight to our positive charge. Take researchers from every nation, let the humans within them collide. We will find the grand unification when we see that we're on the same side. And with every race, tongue, and religion, we'll find how to give all the world mass. If we'd all interact just a smidgen with the openness through which we pass, that requires an American accent, which I don't have. <laughs> <laughs>
When fine life's ups and downs become charming and strange when we face them head on, and what's more, seeking beauty and truth, we can make a big change with small change from the purses of war. Take the light at the end of the tunnel and ensure it goes all the way around to illuminate more than the sun and enlighten with what we have found. When your unresolved matters, understanding runs thin. You face too many forces to name. If you cut out the din and put energy in, it turns out that we're all just the same.